Uh, well, thank you for joining us for this installment of Think Data Thursday. Today we have Alan Walker, uh, who's going to do some advanced map box and Tableau. And just a little bit about Alan. Responsive dashboards, animations on Tableau Public, and device-specific dashboards with just CSS. Alan Walker is leading the way in advanced Tableau visualizations. Currently working as an engineer at Mapbox and as a Tableau Zen master. In this session, Alan will walk us through a few demos showing us some of the advanced features of Tableau with Mapbox Maps. Uh, for any questions that you might have as we go through the presentation today, uh, please save them for the end and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, have all of this information shared out to you and on our uh, Tableau community site in the Think Data Thursday section and I will also share out our uh, playlist for all of the Think Data Thursday sessions, including this one and any of the past ones. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to Alan. Good morning, everybody. Hello everybody, good morning. My name is Alan Walker. I'm an engineer at Mapbox. So we're gonna do a Think Data Thursday. And um, here at Mapbox, we make maps for uh, customers. Um, we have a couple of platforms and tools that uh, we can use with um, in concert with Tableau. We also do directions and navigation. And we also do geographic search as well. So we've been busy working with Tableau um, to integrate Tableau with, with Mapbox and Mapbox, sorry, and Tableau integrating with us. But what are we, uh, what are we really doing? We're, we're working with a, an awful lot of data. We work primarily with uh, geospatial data and big data, really, really big data. Massive data, in fact. And um, this, ex this example here, shows the uh, world population counts at one kilometer square grid. So every uh, dot you see is a grid. And what that will do is you'll be able to zoom in into that area and get the population count for that grid. And that's, that's fine and dandy, um, but how does it work with Tableau? Well, on the left hand side, you'll see the same map as the background map with those one kilometer square grids. And it's exactly the same, same data. Um, but on the right hand side, what I've done is a function um, called an intersect so that we can pull the data out of that map and allocate it to a point. So this is a feature that you'll be starting to see in, um, I think, I believe it's in the current beta of Tableau. Um, one of these, uh, this is a, an example of that intersect join that if you attended the Tableau conference, you would have seen on stage when Kent Martin showed it. And this is what this, um, dashboard is, is, is doing. It basically takes that grid, takes the value, and then applies it to the point. So today, we're going to go through a couple of things. A bit of thinking um, that we're doing uh, about, about data, about Tableau, about Mapbox, 
and what we can do to bring Mapbox and Tableau together. So the first thing, concept that I'd like to show you is escaping flatland. This is the idea of using 3D um, information. Uh, in, this, in, in this context, it's a capability called LiDAR. And what that does is when you see more um, data being encoded in a map, you get a richer visual context. You get more understanding because your surroundings become familiar and therefore you don't have to think that little bit harder to, um, to get to where you want to be. So let me come out of my keynote and get on the internet. Now I do warn everybody, this is going to be a, a web demonstration. These things almost always fail when, it, when we do them. So please don't laugh or giggle if it doesn't work. I hope it does, but um, you know, these things tend to be uh, a little bit tricky. There we go. So this is obviously the tip of, of Manhattan. We can see here. And it's starting to look really quite pretty. If you're wondering what these lines are, this is live traffic data. So in here we have red with some severe and the darker blue signifies that it's heavy, but it's not um, light. And then the cyan there is, is light traffic. And if I click on a building here, let's see if this is going to work. Oh, good, it does. We can pull up data about um, not only this building, but the nearest census block. Here in the United States, the census block is the lowest level granularity of data for um, census information. So I thought it'd be really quite fun to basically be able to click down into that. So I can click on my chart here. And you can see on the left hand side in my fold out menu, I have the total population. I have the um, trend for males, the trends for female population, and a trend for income here. Now, that's great and all. Um, but just to prove out that we're doing things dynamically, I can click any building on any census block and it's going to pull up this trend dynamically on the left-hand side. Let's go a bit further down. Maybe click on this guy. Come on. Oh, web demonstrations, don't let me down now. Uh, maybe click on this guy. There we go. So what you're seeing on the left-hand side is obviously there's 20 data points. There's four um, for five. So I have 20 parameters in the uh, Tableau workbook. And because the data isn't being held in Tableau, I'm passing those values um, from the Mapbox uh, cloud from each individual uh, tile, which is in here. So you can see these, these 256 tiles. And then I have a little, a little neat trick in here. I can click on this audio, I hope this works. The height of the roof of this building in feet is 190 in meters, 58 the ground elevation in feet is 68 and in meters 21 the year of the building's construction was 1924 and the nearest census block identification number is 360 billion 610 million 84,002. So as you can see, um, we're doing 
an awful lot of data. These are, uh, there's roughly 150 million polygon features and that, that we're seeing rendered in the, in the web browser. Um, I think you can agree that we've successfully escaped um, from the flatland, the two-dimensional world uh, by doing this. You can, um, although it still looks a little bit like Minecraft or Lego, we, that can always be improved as well, just with some processing. But I think you can agree that the, the level of detail here that we're able to extract from that data is, is pretty sublime. So the next demonstration um, that I'm going to go through is a completely new concept We're using a combination of tools and vendors, such as Mapbox, and we're using uh, Exasol here, which is the uh, world's fastest database. And we're obviously going to use Tableau for our charts. And we're going to use a huge data set by Zillow that again, if you saw, if you went to the Tableau conference, you saw the guys use in the, in the iron viz here. But what I'm going to show you is more of a concept um, about how we're going to think about visually zooming in and out of your data. So this is a, a new user interaction. It's a new uh, um, way of thinking. Um, what we're what we're going to do is zoom in and out of other dashboards. That's why you paused when you saw those dashboards load up. And we're going to start being able to drill down and drill back up again from the national level um, all the way down to the county level. And we should be able to see uh, state information and metro statistical area information. So again, I, I will warn you, this is a, 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 a concept demonstrator at this point, so if it breaks, don't, uh, don't hold me to it. So the first thing we've got is a, a, a normal metric swapper, so we can change the metric in the, in the data viz. So now we're looking at the median sold price for the, uh, the national uh, level. And now we can look at the median value per square feet in dollars. And here's the percentage of homes decreasing in value. We hover over the, the tool tip. And one little tableau trick um, on here is the label at the uh, end of the 39% at this piece. So I have a prefix calculation and a postfix calculation that lets, lets me change the symbol to either a blank if there's going to be a dollar in front of it or a percentage. So it's a, a basically a case statement that uh, postfix the correct uh, symbol on the end of that uh, tooltip. Let me just show you that. So it should show you, there you go, a dollar. When I change that metric with a metric swap parameter. So here's where the fun starts. If I click this button to zoom in, I see the majority of the states, there's actually only 46 here. Now we can click on the, uh, the state here in our uh, map and we've got the equivalent of a highlight action um, on the Tableau Viz. So what this is doing is using the JavaScript API um, to select the value of Texas. And these other lines are representing other states. So we can go ahead and click this guy in Hawaii. And my map is zooming over to Hawaii at the same time. 
Let me just show you that again. Let's try California. And um, what I'm doing is I'm sending the coordinates of the middle of California with the data. Now, the Zillow house data um, doesn't have any coordinates in, in the data set. So what I do is, again, I'm using an extensive case statement to say if the value is California, send it these coordinates. So I'm sending the centroid or the middle of California as a value in lat long and then the map updates. So we can see this again. Let's go from the map to the viz. And you'll see that the, vis the map is also centering on the, the state after I click it. And you've still got all the interactivity from the, the Tableau Viz. Now, if I select off the Viz, I'm going to zoom in to the next level, which are these uh, metropolitan statistical areas. This is when things start to get a little bit gnarly. There's a lot more than 49, uh, sorry, 46 states shown here. We have an awful lot of uh, MSAs. And how have I, I, I've encoded the color by saying basically if we have a, a row of a, a rows of data um, about this level, I'm going to color you green, even though there's lots and lots and lots more of these uh, metro statistical areas. So I'm clicking this guy and Tableau has recognized the value and selected the line there. Let's click on this guy. And we're starting to see some bumps. Now, I know this one, Santa Barbara, has got a fairly high value. So let's see if it works. Yeah, there we go. That's a fairly big line. And what's going on here is that Santa Barbara, there was potentially a very high value property in the data set, bumped this number for the years, you know, 2013 to 2014. And then there was a few more properties in that county later on, um, you know, that would be of less value. Let's go and have a look at this guy over here in uh, Massachusetts. So we've encoded that. And if we get lost at any time, we can just click on this revert button. And what that does is it pushes the map to the middle of um, the 48 states and it resets the, the visualization as well. So we have that kind of fallback. Then let's zoom into the counties. And there's an awful lot of counties uh, in the data set that are encoded. So this is gonna take a little bit longer to process, but it's found it in the viz. Let's have a look at this guy. And then we can go, let's go the other way. Let's have a look at this big spike up here. So this is the Summit County in, in Utah State. So I used to actually live up in Cache, uh, Cache County up here when I worked at Utah State. Let's have a look at Salt Lake. There we go. So the parlor trick really here is I'm able to zoom in and out of my dashboards at different levels. 
I can go in and in. And the dashboards will show and hide at different levels. Now the next logical step for this is if I'm seeing these states in my view, then what you'd expect is for it only to show the lines for these states on the left hand side to be in the vis on the right hand side. So we are getting there. This is another proof of concept. And I do warn you, this may well crash Tableau Server. But let's try it. Let's zoom slowly. So now we're seeing another dashboard appear on the right hand side. We've already been at the continent level. We've zoomed into the countries. And what it is actually saying is, I'm not going to show you everything in the, uh, in the viz. I'm already filtering down the continent and I'm already filtering down the countries that are in the map. So Tableau is working very, very hard right now. You can see that the continents have been filtered down to just Europe, Asia, South America and Africa. You can see the countries. Brazil, yes, it's that uh, country on the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the map. We can clearly see Spain. We can clearly see Italy. But we can't see, for example, the United Kingdom in our country list. And then we started to look at states. We can start to see Madrid. We can start to see Istanbul. Let's go one deep further. So you can see here's Europe, here's Africa, here's Spain, here's the States. Let's go one more in. So now we can see that the, the, the dashboards, we're only seeing Africa. We're only seeing these countries. We're only seeing these states. If I push it fast enough, though, I will probably end up breaking the Tableau server. But let's see if we can fly to somewhere using our search. Here's Singapore. And you can see not only are we showing the dashboards at the right level, but we're also showing the filtered values of those geographic levels. Let's try one more. Yay! And it didn't crash Tableau Server. I'm so happy. <laughs> so with these uh, with the, these kind of maps, what we're able to do is go into the last level, the city level, and what I'm doing is I'm putting a fourth dashboard into the uh, the tooltip here. So this tooltip is is not a Tableau tooltip, it's a Mapbox tooltip. But you can see that we're able to pull out other information. And we can also get that data from the get data function in the JavaScript API. And we're doing an an, an awful lot at this at the same time. And then I can go back to the start here. at any time. So quite a few concepts there um, that we're trying to, uh, to push through into, uh, into Tableau. So we're really using uh, Mapbox for the maps 
and we're using Tableau for the charts rather than putting the map inside Tableau. Although, of course, you can definitely do that. So let's go and have a look at Tableau Public. So just to show you that dashboard again with that massive data, uh, massive data that we saw from the grids earlier. And this is completely inside the box Tableau. This is no, there's no JavaScript API. There's no coding. There's no, um, this is something everybody can do. Um, we can get a back, a background map. Uh, into into Tableau just simply by cutting and pasting your your map box style uh, into Tableau and then you get all of this um, this goodness all these these numbers and let's see if we can change the state here to California maybe and we'll take off New York And let's do San Francisco. <laughs> if it's there, yep. And let's do Contra Costa. And now you can start to see these population grids. So obviously San Francisco and Oakland are really populated areas and you're going to have these values. So this um, medical center and the one kilometer grid around it you have 6,040 people. And another example of where we, we don't need to use JavaScript API was this guy. So I took some open source, open, uh, open, sorry, some open data from the um, CDC. Um, you know, if you go on the CDC website, you can download the influenza uh, data. Um, and this is a very, very simple uh, map box uh, background map. This is um, this is just the dark uh, dark level, and the the only uh, difference that I've done here is this region. So this this region nine uh, in um, ha has some very very small islands in that data set, but they don't they, they they don't come through in the data. They're just there on the on the on the website saying we actually include these or we're responsible for these islands, such as the Marshall Islands and um, Palau and. They, they, so what I've done is basically joined or unioned these uh, geographies um, together with the other two states, or so the other three mainland states and the other territory. Sorry, there's three mainland states and there's also Hawaii, of course, and then there's um, territories such as America and Samoa um, to, to the geography. Uh, and in the background, what I've done is I've, Put in a like a a point shape file with the um, the names only uh, of these uh, um, small territories, um, so that I can at least encode them into my into my map. Now the map really isn't doing anything. There's no values associated with the with the map, and all we're doing is visually showing people where the region is. And in fact, you probably don't need a map at all. Um, 
you know, a, a business user would only really care about the the chart on the right hand side there. Um, it's just to show that we can do this now um, with with Tableau um, and Mapbox, and I think it's it's a, a super cool way where again we're not we're not using any JavaScript code to do this. We're all we're doing is using the power of both tools uh, to come up with a, a fairly uh, relative uh, novel solution um, to to a problem um, where you have you know sm small islands that people don't even know where. I mean, I didn't know where they were, um, especially you know the Marshall Islands and Palau. I didn't know exactly where they were. I knew they were in the Pacific Ocean, but now we can actually visualize and see and understand that data. So I'm 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 kind of uh, kind of pleased with this one. So with that being said, um, I can certainly start taking some some questions and and, and answers. Um, I just would like to say thank you very much for your time um, to to come and to listen to me and uh, seeing what Mapbox and, and Tableau can do together. Um, I wanted to, um, you know, discuss through different user experiences and user interfacing and new ideas about how to zoom and, and, and filter uh, your, your dashboard um, visually, which I think is super cool um, with the map. Um, I'd, I'd really love for um, Tableau to start thinking about um, giving us access to these uh, Zoom levels in Tableau. I think that would be a really a, a natural um, way of looking at, you know, looking at data uh, with mapping. Um, and the more that we can do without um, Resorting to uh, JavaScript code, I think, would be would be really cool too, so that everybody can benefit from that sort of um, capability. So, if um, if we want to handle uh, questions. I'd be glad to take them uh, in the chat box, perhaps, um, and then maybe I can I can talk to you guys. Hey Matthew, I'm not sure. Um, hey. Yeah. Hey, are you there? Okay. Yeah. How's awesome. it going? Uh, did uh, you have a question? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I did have a question. I guess my question would be for Alan. Like, how would you have the map responsively change if geographic boundaries were changing? For instance, like Pennsylvania's county lines are about to change. Yep. How would you do that? Well, um, at Mapbox, what we do, uh, maps are our, our gig, you know. Yeah. And we, ha we have this um, admi uh, admin data set that is constantly being refreshed. So the main, the main thing is the separation um, between the geometry, um, the actual shape, and the data that's being sent or the value that's being sent which is still going to be Pennsylvania so the name if there's a name change it's straightforward as uh, as an uh, an insert mm -hmm. if it's an admin boundary change these can be reflected in a couple of ways um, we can use uh, open street map um, the United Nations also um, change uh, boundaries there's USGS, uh, which changed, you know, which is in charge of the geometries. And if you go to USGS um, 
Tiger Tiger Line Shapefile um, in Google. Uh, they you know they have the, rec- the the geometries going back I think every year for ten years. Um, awesome. So we what we what we what we do is basically we, you know we have a, a lot of uh, providers uh, into Mapbox. Uh, and then other vendors can also um, use those uh, geometries as well. So uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I'm trying to. I'm still. I'm like very new to programming. Um, and I did my first like Open Map API consumption about a couple of weeks ago, and it was really yeah. easy. Yeah. Um, which is great. So. <laughs> That's awesome. But I was wondering, do you know? I know. So I looked in. The, I've looked in the Open Maps as well. Are there? Does the United Nations have an API? Um, you know, they have a capability called the Humanitarian Data Exchange, and they they have a ton of uh, GeoJSON and Esri shape files, uh, and um, they have a lot of. Um, good data sets as well that you you can bring together awesome yep yep well thank you so much this was really inf- um i really appreciate you hosting this oh sure it's uh if you if you look at the united nations uh just google humanitarian data exchange un humanitarian data exchange i think it's just hdx Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, excellent. Awesome. Sweet. Um, I used to know like uh, so I just maybe like advice here. Um, I started learning Ruby, but it seems that most map stuff is done with JavaScript. Should I just switch to JavaScript? Oh, I the the main um two. So I have a couple of tools um that I use. I love a tool called QGIS. QGIS, um, okay. Yep, yeah, uh, QGIS. It's um, an open source um, free software, which is fabulous for GIS um, editing and viewing. Um, when you saw a couple of the maps earlier, uh, that one kilometer grid thing was from NASA. Uh, it's a massive, massive raster. And Q just converts it to a, a vector uh, file. Now, when it comes to coding, um, the majority um, of transformations, or ETL if you like, for geographies um, tends to be a, a, a library called GDAL. But with QGIS, it's it's not drag and drop per se, it's more kind of um like Microsoft Office was in the 19 you know in the in, in the 90s where you know it's file menu driven kind of thing cool it, it will let you do a lot if you really want to get into it then um Python has uh gdal uh you know gdal libraries which lets you do the same transforms but you know mo- Modern tooling like QGIS is very powerful, and there's really no reason to resort to code unless you need to. Um, Mapbox itself, we have a Studio Classic, which you can style your map, um, and it, it's um, it's menu driven. Um, a lot of our tools are JavaScript uh, based, and you saw that when I'm starting to push boundaries with, you know, filtering things on the fly and, you know, showing and hiding dashboards. But by and large, I would love to see a, a world where we don't really have to think about what language of, of code that we use um, that, that, that there are tools out there that will support these functions um, and, and you know, it make it easier for, for business users that simply don't have the time to code. Uh, awesome. Well, I'll let someone else ask a question, but thank you so much, Alan. Um, oh, you're welcome.
This is great. I took so many notes. I really appreciate it. Great. Uh, so we have a note on from Rob Labs. Have you ever seen an example of plotting map contour elevations with Tableau? So uh, yes, um, even more than that, uh, what we can do is take the, the, the elevation. Um, maybe if I share my screen. And if I go to Tableau Public, Here's a, a kind of super cool example. So instead of contours, what, what I was able to do was to go from the uh, 2D raster, the, the digital elevation model, um, which is a GeoTIFF. And then we vectorized that in in QGIS. And then on the in the Viz side, what we have, if I maybe zoom in down here. So you'll notice these parameters on the um, the left hand side. This was um, Noah Salvaterra, uh, genius mathemat mathematics. Um, doing 3D in Tableau and a Tableau employee uh, who's since moved on called Bora Bevan. Um, he was able to do uh, share his 3D uh, rotation calculations and on, um, so you can see that we've kind of gone beyond contour maps. We're now into being able to do elevation models. Um, this is a bit you know, it's still a bit slow in Tableau to do these kind of rotations because um, you're pushing so many marks around and it's it's a lot easier to do that in uh, Mapbox Studio. Maybe I can show you a quick example of that. So here's my shameless plug for the Visualize, Visualize No Malaria project. Uh, we do a project in, um, with a, an organization called PATH that are a partner of the Tableau Foundation. And we're starting to build up these massive data sets of entire countries where we're able to render out the elevation in 3D using a similar technique um, to the um, to the LiDAR piece that I showed you. So we're able to um, 
render just massive, massive amounts of data. And of course you can zoom and you can rotate these, these guys almost, almost entirely um, asynchronously in your, in, your, in your browser. So you can see, see the kind of level of detail that we can go to. Maybe I'll stop the screen and get back to the back to the chat. So I'd I'd really welcome it, um, some questions or discussion around the um, kind of the up leveling of the user experience and thinking about the you know using a map um, to zoom in and out of your data. Now, as you all know, a map is, is really just a scatter plot. So I, what I'd love to be able to do is to zoom in and out of a scatter plot that has multiple levels of granularity or dimensionality. Um, I think that would be a, a really cool um, way of, of looking, at, uh, looking at data. Um, I think, you know, there's been so much movement from uh, kind of two-dimensional uh, mapping into three-dimensional mapping that I think that escaping flatland is kind of more or less achieved and it's just a matter of time till we start seeing that kind of functionality in tools like Tableau. Um, but it, it, I'm really um, wanting to get some feedback about this, I, this, this concept of zooming in and out of your data as well as you know as well as filtering down at the same at the same level so i think if if anybody has any kind of thoughts or or just simply what did you think about that kind of capability okay a uh, comment from ruth my difficulties in maps center around trying to pin locations when I'm bo using both shapefiles from census and native geometries like a county. So I think, Ruth, it might be that the... What I would point you to is probably thinking about the centroids of the... Um, the centroids of locations. I think right now what Tableau does is basically tries to center the map based on how many marks are at that point. So if you've got a big clustering of marks in Europe and you've only got a few marks in uh, America and, and Asia, then what it does is it it, it kind of automatically zooms to the sorry it pans to where the majority of marks are. I believe that's the current um, the the current way that the 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 table uh, table maps work. Um, cool. <laughs> I'm glad that's I'm glad that's the case. So the the only way to kind of force a uh, force an a, a uh, a user uh, interface or a user experience action like that is to kind of set up um, some um, some sheets where what you're doing is you basically swap your your sheet in and out um, to say this is the view that I want specifically for this um, and that kind of puts a bounding box around the um around the map it's it's it can be frustrating and i hear the frustrations because it's not um a kind of natural action um you can pin pin a view and the other thing that um if you have access to tableau server you can actually save a custom view on on in on the server that you can load back later. So you can set your map, map up the way you want it and then basically hit save 
uh, save view on the Tableau server and it kind of freezes what you see. I hope that helps. Great. Yeah, you're welcome. So we have uh, five five minutes. People, don't be shy. I'm I'm more than happy to love talking about mapping and Tableau and and Mapbox and. can hear the sound of silence rather than the patter of keys on keyboards. Okay, from Matthew. Why were certain counties, bigger cities excluded from the Zillow data set for medium sales? So this is a good, a good, a good question. Um, so there was a couple of city, uh, sorry, county levels um, like San Francisco uh, um, that you don't see currently in that view. So I think in the Zillow data set, there's something crazy like 16.9, or no, sorry, 1.6 billion rows or something nuts. Now to render all of that in, uh, in the charts, especially when you're down at the city level, you need a couple of things. You need to know the city name, you need to know the state name, you need to know the county name, and potentially you need to know the zip as well. This is because in the US you have a county, sorry, you have cities with the same name, even at the same, uh, even in the same county. So you definitely have cities um, with the same name in different states, and then you have um, it's. Basically, you end up with this massive long string concatenation that you have to pass from one to the other. Um, and what that does is you, you need to basically be able to null out those values. Um, the other thing is the data set um, from, I think it's 2013, and some entire states aren't, aren't included. Uh, I think New Mexico starts in, in 2013, for example, um, and that really limits the um, limits your your kind of I want to include everything kind of thing. Um, and while it's tempting for performance, I think you can see e even when I'm clicking and pushing, and Tableau does take a little while to um, select that value. Um, and I wanted it to be um, as performant as possible because it's it's super frustrating um, clicking on something and nothing happens. I think that's that that's the where where my frustration lies. People want snap and speed, and um, that was that's partly the reason for that. So it may well have been excluded by some of the the filtering that I've done on the database. Um, but there are there are definitely examples in that database where there's entire chunks, and it's not because Zillow's not a census company. What they're doing is, if they don't have a record for it, then they don't have a record for it. Um, I guess. I hope that helps your 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 question. Uh, Rebecca, where is the best place for us to start learning how to build maps like this, and what do we need to begin? i.e. a clean data set with longs and lats. So, Rebecca, um, there's a couple of places uh, I like to use. <clears throat> the, first, the first place to go, um, because I'm from the UK, I, I like looking at the, uh, the, the .gov, uh, .uk, uh website. There's a ton of census data out there. There's a ton of stuff like the uh, the motorways and the free, uh, the the A roads and the B roads data, and that has got some really good uh, accident um, data with the the latitudes and longitudes. I know people have looked at the latitudes and longitudes of schools. 
Um, in the US, we're kind of blessed with this, you know, the USGS, um, the, 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 the government um, census. There, there's, um, if, you, if you just type in USGS features shapefile, you end up with this massive gigabyte file of just about every single facility in the United States. It's, I mean, it's bonkers. Um, as far as um, the, the world, um, which I think is important here, um, we have OpenStreetMap as well. And the, the, the best place to start, I think, would probably be to go and download a, a copy of QGIS um, and, and start having a play with that. Find some shape files on on the web, pull them into QGIS, um, start seeing those dots. And and the other thing is, you know, with Tableau, you have the 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 spatial file connector, and it's you can try using that as well to put those dots on the map. I hope that helped. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Let me uh, type it. It is Q G I S, just like that. And I apologise for my my Scottish accent. Well, guys, it's one minute to the uh, to the hour, so I can either give you the minute back or or I can hang on till nine. If anybody has time for one quick last question. Oh, historical mapping tools. That's a really cool one. So um, what you can do is take really, really, really old maps, um, you know, from the 1700s, and you can do what's called georeferencing them. So basically, you, you take the image into QGIS, and you can start um, clicking on the map, and it'll start to georeference the map. And what that, what that will do is basically make uh, the, the, the software understand where that map is, and then you can start to work with it um, as a file, you, you can make it a raster based file um, called a GeoTIFF, and then you, you can upload that to Mapbox, for example, as a background map. Yeah, but super cool. Okay, guys, well, that's uh, nine o'clock. I really want to say thank you so much for your time. Um, hit me up on um, my Mapbox email, if you like, it's a-l-l-a-n dot walker at mapbox.com. Um, I'm, I'm a busy guy, um, but I'll try and get back to your questions as, as soon as I can. So thank you very much. Thank like you, your... Alan. And awesome. And we will have the video up on our YouTube uh, playlist later today, so look out for that. And stay tuned for our next Think Data Thursday, which we'll be announcing soon. Thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for your questions.